I'm gonna take a shot on this one. I'm gonna say beer. I'm buying everybody around on this! Oh my god! Everybody, really? welcome back to Big Apple Hockey Bar Talk, where one of us forgot to silence their phone. Uh, I don't know who it is. It's mine is that mine is good. not me. I because always it, keep my right. phone silent. It, that, that, that's kind of weird because I even silenced the computer to make sure it's, that I can't. It's anything. my phone silent, but it's can, my phone is synced up with my um with my. Oh, with, okay. Laptop. So there you go. Mm. All right. So anyway. Um, we're, we're, we're going to be gauging NHL topics based on our choice of drink. Do you feel confident and you got to buy everybody around? You just a little bit, you know, you just like, Oh, just want a beer or you need a shot because no, absolutely not. So Philip Heedle is poised for a breakout season. Mr. Fokowski. I'm going to, I'm going to say beer. I, I lean a little towards shot here, but I'm going to say beer. I, I think it's more than possible. I think Quadzilla, as I, I like to call them now, because those quads are just massive. They're nuclear now. But I, I think that he's got a lot of potential. I, I think that he could be, at the very least, a very good middle six center, if not a good second line center. Now, here's the question. Who does he play with? Because line mates are important. It's not Vitaly Kravtsov. It's not going to be Vitaly Kravtsov, obviously. But who does he play with? What is his usage? Does he get any power play time? Does Gallant give the second unit any type of power play time? And if Ryan Strom starts to falter any bit, does he get to move up? So I, I just wonder how much of an opportunity he's going to get because he actually posted some good numbers last year despite not getting any power play time and playing third line minutes with two other players that were under the age of 21. So I, technically this one's really hard for me because I do think that with guys who could really win a lot of board battles and play better defense, I, I think that can allow him to do other things that will allow his offense to, to grow. But at the same time, it, it, it's usage. And I, I feel like he, he will be held back a little bit because of the way that Gallant will more than likely use him. So I'm going to say beer. Um, I'm going to go beer too. I want to buy everybody around. It depends how you want to define the words breakout, especially for a third line center. If he scores 20 goals, is that a breakout season? I think he might get 20. I, 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 I He looked so much the part in that last preseason game. Hopefully you get started tonight with a goal uh, versus the Washington Capitals, Anthony. Yes. Um, I I was gonna go shot because in our in our in our rundown it says Philip Heedle has finally arrived, and I was sitting thinking to myself like, yeah, he had a really good preseason game, but I mean that's 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 ridiculous to insinuate he's gonna or he's arrived <laughs> because of a good preseason game. So if that would have stood, I would have said shot, but this wording. Um, you know, I'm changing it to beer because uh, he could he could break out. He's he's a good skilled offensive player. There's no there's no doubt about that. He skates well. Um, but like as Philip mentioned, I think he's I think if he can get his game to where he he could play the second line roles in center, that'd be better better suited for him because a third line center, um, I think he would need to really someone on his line that we can rely on to really be the responsible one. Um, and have good board play because that's the one area of his game where you know he still needs to work on. But regardless of what is where he's used, second, third line center, he does have the skill to to break out offensively and do like a you know like a, a twenty twenty season or a twenty twenty five season. Um, so for sure, uh, it's definitely a possibility. Uh, what were you missing, John? Something wasn't updating with it because this wasn't in. Yeah, well, you know, we'll talk about that later. Okay, it, I don't, I don't, some technical, technical problem. Technical, yes. Yeah. The Islanders will regret cutting Eric Gustafson. Is there Larocco? Beer. Um, I mean, it's you know, let's not pretend that you know they just they just cut like Cal McCarr off the roster, but um, I mean, he he would have been an offensive, providing left hand defense. I mean, Char and Andy Green behind Pelic aren't going to give you a lot of offense. So um, that regard for sure. 
Uh, I think the one thing we're all in agreement on, Eric Gustafson really is not great in his own end. So that's why I'm not too broken up about it. But at the same time, I think he would have been good on the power play um, and, you know, had a better mobile, similar Nick Letty skating the puck out of trouble defenseman on the left side. Um, but, you know, ultimately, as Dave Pinot said, they, could, they couldn't make the money work. You know, the Islanders uh, right, right now are, are squeezed for a cap um, and they couldn't get it done. So, you know, you know, Green, Chara, step up, you know, uh, Sebastian Ajo, I mean, he'll have, if he does get in the lineup, you know, he's a good skating defenseman. So he'll have to, you know, play his part. But, um, yeah, it would have been nice to have him, but, you know, it's not the end of the world. So um, that's why I'm going with a beer. But I wish him well in Chicago. And who knows, maybe he can get back to the level that he was once at. Phil? Shot. I, I don't see how they even feel his loss. Uh, listen, I, I get that you were looking to him to kind of come in and run the power play. I always thought that he wasn't good in his own end and at even strength that he might have been a problem for them. So I, I think if – especially if Robin Sallow comes in, and Robin Sallow looks yeah. to at least be able to de- be a decent puck mover at even strength and be even average in his own zone, I, I really don't think they're going to have much of a problem with cutting Harry Gustafson. And really, like, what, let's just say he goes to Chicago, which he did, and he puts up, I don't know, 40, 50 points. Sure, it looks bad. It's a bad optic. But would he have done the same thing in the island? I, I, I would venture to probably say no. I think that Barry Trotz's system probably wouldn't have allowed him to play that way in even strength. And ultimately, I, I, I really don't think he's, he's that much of a difference maker on the island. So I'm going to say shot. I'm going shot to uh, as much as I think the Islanders need a power play point man. And as much as they need a power play trigger, man, I don't, I don't think it's Gustafson. I think Gustafson has been okay. Uh, his only good season was when he was playing with Patrick Kane on that power play unit. Other than that, meh. So and he's been to Calgary. He's been to Montreal, the Islanders, and now back to Chicago. So, I, I, I'm not a believer unless you need to find somebody on the waiver wire in your fantasy league, but he is, he's a, uh, he's playing on the second pair at Noah Dobson, which yep. being a power play, no, Noah Dobson's going to get a lot of power play time. Um, and Mark, they do have the trigger man and, and Pollock. Pollock has one of the hardest shots in the league on the back end for. The yeah. But so why? He's... I mean, I, I thought he was going to develop into something great. And he's just been, I mean, he's good. Don't he get seems, me wrong. He, he's one of those guys who sometimes just does not get his shot on net enough for how powerful it is. Yeah, if he gets it on net yes. and there's some sort of screen, chances are it'll probably go in at that point. But that it's not nearly enough. And you need you need better from your trigger man, no matter how hard their shot actually is. So for me, yes. Ryan Pollock is not like your uh, your he's not your ideal trigger man you, do you like the fact that he shoots double digits yeah but no. you don't like the fact that he just doesn't get it on net nearly enough and he does he does have a bomb it's just a you just wish it would get on that um a conversation that was brought up earlier by our anthony Loraco when he was talking to dave paniota the fourth period phil kessel will be the first big trade of the season I'm going to start. I'm going to start on this one. Uh, you know what? I'm buying again because the reason why I think Arizona is going to want to move him sooner, get him out, and uh, before there's any injury, and have a, a team that can use him and eat some of that that cap space. By the way, he finally comes off of Toronto's books. Uh, I think after this season. So mm-hmm. Anthony. Well, yeah, because he's a he's a free agent at the end of this year. So and, and it's still the contract. Toronto deal. Yeah, no, I understand that they're retaining, but the contract ends. So the, obviously, yeah. the the all the retention comes off for any team. But I'm going to say shot here because I, I even though Dave said before that he thinks that this could drag on, I, I think that Dylan Strom will be dealt before him. I think Chicago has an excess of centers. I think they're going to want a piece for him. I just wonder if it's going to be a defender or if it's going to be a winger. So I, I think Dylan Strom will probably be the big, the first big trade of the season. Anthony. I'm going to go. 
I'm going to go beer because, I, I, you know, prior to the news about Dylan Strom, I think it was definitely going to be Phil Kessel. Um, you know, the fourth period reported about a week or two ago that Phil Ke- the Arizona stated that Phil Kessel wasn't in their plans and that he could expect it to be traded this season. But it seems like Dylan, Dylan Strom's pending deals seems to be more imminent. So um, that's why I'm saying beer. But Phil Kessel is definitely going to be traded. Um, his actual dollars versus cap hit, I think, makes him attractive to a lot of teams. Um, and I think that there's definitely going to be a contender um, who maybe struggles maybe right at, early out of the gate with scoring that makes a move uh, quickly to get him. Cause I think a lot of, I don't think he's going to go until the deadline. I think he's going to be traded within the first, you know, two months of the season maybe. So, um, and I think he could provide a lot, but I, I just think Dylan Strom is going to be traded first. So beer. If you like that video, we got a lot more. So check out any of these that are right over here. And don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. Your ideas are intriguing to me, and I wish to subscribe to your newsletter.